Hello everybody and welcome back to SC Aviation. Today we're gonna learn how to set up the MCDU of the new Airbus A330 by X-Plane Mobile. Enjoy! Alright, so first thing that we have to check, go down here to the MCDU and check if you have a nav database out of date or check database cycle something a message. If you do have that message, it means that you've nav that your navigation database it's out of date. Now that's not a big issue, but if you want a current nav database, you can go to the three bars here in Xplain, tap settings, nav data, and if you have a Navigraph subscription, you can connect your Navigraph data to Xplain. If you don't, it's okay. Xplain comes with a default navigation subscription, uh, sorry, with a default navigation data but it's just not gonna be the latest one. As you can see, mine is from the 21st of March to the 18th of April, so it's the current database as to the date of uploading of this video. That said, how do we set up our FMC, or MCDU in the case of Airbus? I recommend setting the destination via the navigation page of Xplain before you spawn in. How do you, how do, you do that? You simply search for your destination, then click Add to Route. And once you have done that, you will see here in the MCDU that when you tap on Init, the From Airport and Destination Airport are going to be already set up. In this case, we're flying from Kuala Lumpur in Malaysia with this beautiful Air Asia Airbus A330 towards Tokyo in Japan. So first thing we're going to do, we're going to set up some information such as the flight number. So today we're going to be SC Aviation 001 and so we put that in the flight number and then we enter the cruise fat level for this flight, flight level 330. Then click on next page and we're going to input the zero fuel weight and block fuel. So we're not going to get into detail but for now I'm going to go middle tank and uh, almost full on payload. If you want to get accurate measurements of the needed fuel and maximum payload, you can go to simbrief.com and generate a flight plan there so that you can work with real data and real weights and something like that. But for now, this, since this is just an example, I'm gonna come up with any zero fuel weight and any fuel that will probably get me to my destination. And so to put that into the MCDU, you simply tap on the button next to the fields that you wanna feel, like that, and then again, and like that and then again. What the system is basically doing is that it is searching for what, how much fuel it has on board right now. In this case, it has 55.7 tons. And so it gives me that number so that I don't have to type it in the keyboard manually. Once that is done, we're gonna go with our lateral flight plan. So we go to flight plan here, click on the departure airport, in this case, Kuala Lumpur, then departure. Then we select our departure runway. In this case, it's gonna be one four left. And then the departure procedure. Today, we're gonna to fly with ATIM one alpha departure and then insert that. You can see now that the departure has been inserted into the system. And if we go to nav here, you can see the departure procedure. That is great. And then we're gonna select the arrival procedure at Tokyo. We're gonna select any arrival today. So I left on my one six left, uh, maybe uh, via Adam, approach via Sandy. I'm, I'm not selecting anything here like knowing what I'm doing because it's just an example. But if you wanna do this the real way, what you need to do is again, go to your SimBrief flight plan and see what SimBrief tells you for departure and arrivals. SimBrief again is a free service. Now, once we have done that, we have our departure and arrival set, but we have to check for discontinuities. So here, we're gonna click on clear, and then tap the button next to the discontinuity, like that. And so that clears the discontinuity for us. And our flight plan is more or less set up laterally. Now we have to set the vertical flight plan. Now, the airplane already knows that we're gonna go to flight level 330 because we selected that as our cruising altitude but we need to set the performance information for the other vertical parts of the flight, such as the climb and the descent. So for that, we go to performance, select our desired flap setting, T, 
today it's going to be flap one no flex take of temperature what is the flex take of temperature is basically a way of telling the airplane that the air outside is way hotter than it actually is and so the airplane since it thinks that the air is hotter reduces the engine power that is sort of a trick to reduce the engine wear and expand the engine life but uh, getting that number like the accurate flex take of temperature is something that in the real airlines you would get with some kind of electronic flight back provided by the airline since we are flight simulators we don't have that information so i prefer to always take off with toga trust and then reduce that as we climb that's something that airlines would use in real life also if the airport for some reason is uh, its runway it's too short or the air is too hot and humid or for some reasons that you need full power and you can't reduce then they will indeed use toga trust and after we have done that unfortunately explain doesn't calculate our takeoff speeds for us so we have to come up with them like out of nothing in this case i'm gonna go 140 maybe and then 145 for vr which is rotation speed and then 150 for v2 in case you don't know v1 stands for the decision speed so before that speed you can reject your takeoff after that speed you need to take off no matter what happens you need to go airborne VR is the rotation speed and V2 is the safe climb speed. So now we have V1, VR and V2 set. There are, there are however, uh, services on the web that can calculate those speeds for us so you can search in the internet so that you don't have to come up with any speed that you guess. In this case, I think that based on the weight and the length of the runway, those speeds will work more or less, but it's better to um, come up with those speeds via a web service that has mathematical equations behind. And after we have done that, guess what guys? Our MCDU is set up. That's basically all you have to do. Setting the MCDU in Airbus is quite easy. But in order for the airplane to fly that profile, we need to do something here in the FCU or the flight control unit. We need to select our initial climb. In this case, it's gonna be 330 here on the autopilot and then slide our finger uh, hold on yeah and then slide our finger until we see that dot that uh, yellow dot when we have three yellow dot it's mean it means that the airplane is configured to fly in the managed mode so in the mode managed by the FMC and now we are ready to take off so see what happens when we take off. I'm going to skip here all the procedures and the pushback and the taxi and I'm going to go directly to runway 1 for left. So here's runway 1 for left. Let me tap the runway. Like come on. Oh. Runway 1 for left. Oh. There it was, yeah, runway one for left. Okay, here we are, runway one for left. And we didn't lose the information on the flight plan, but we do need to set here the FCU to everything managed. So uh, speed and heading and altitude is on managed mode on our flight plan is set so now i'm gonna go to constraints here and nav good so we are ready to go let's see what happens i'm gonna take flight flaps one plus f so we'll take a flaps out of break goes to max arm the spoilers let's turn on landing lights taxi lights ropes wing naval logo seat belts uh, all that yep that is set we should be getting here in the in the primary flight display a climb message climb blue message 
we're not getting it but i think that's not going to matter when we take off i just want to show you how to activate what we just set up in the mcdu once we take off so now that we're ready let's go and let's see what happens so mantoga so manual and takeoff trust or go around trust s or s which keeps us on the climb path runway track and also thrust blue which means that it is armed in this case pilots would usually say mantoga srs one way off the thrust blue and you can see that the off the thrust just engaged here on the fcu keep the center line this is not a takeoff procedure guys a takeoff tutorial i'm not following any procedures here and then we said that our takeoff speed was about 145 knots So we got there, B1, rotate. There we go. Gear up, nav. We have nav here on the, PD, on the primary flat display. And so we click on autopilot one. And the airplane is now flying what we told it to fly on the uh, MCDU. Now, once we pass 1,500 feet of altitude, I will get a message here that tells me to reduce the throttles and put them in the climb um, detent. So let's wait for that. Maybe it's 2,000 instead of 1,500, sorry. Mm, I'm not getting the message, that is weird. Okay, you should get the message, but for some reason we didn't get it. It should say here, lever climb. So we're gonna do that manually. So we reduce the throttle to climb. Now we are following the climb profile. One, one thing weird that is happening is that we are still on SRS mode. We should be on climb mode. But if I, there we go. If I just selected the, the managed climb here. I had already selected on takeoff. I know I did, don't know what happened there. But now we are on the, on the path by the MCDU. So you can see throttle climb, climb on the vertical path and nav on the lateral path. So now the aeroplane is gonna follow automatically everything that we have programmed in the MCDU. And that guys is how you set up the MCDU in the Airbus A330. Now, this varies from, from airplane to airplane, from airport to airport. So this was like a general explanation. If you want a more detailed tutorial, please type that in the comments. And if you also want a landing tutorial with the MCDU so that we can set up the approach and the arrival procedure and all that, please type that in the comments as well. For now, have a great day and thank you for watching SC Aviation. Goodbye.